It's Saturday morning. And look at all this rice here. These are all like nearly 700 pounds worth of rice. All on here. And this here is our rice in 30 pound bags. Right there. Um, yep, all ready to go. Here's another bag being done here. So right now we're going to be headed out to get more rice. I hear my, that truck, that's going to be one of the teachers, one of my managers coming. All right, looking inside the combine, you see all these gears. It grabs the rice, moves along here, and this is the thrasher. So the, the, you can see the holes in there where the rice falls through, and you can see the rice in here, right? And then this ends up going into the uh, carry case and there's air being blown here and the rice falls into these holes into the case so you wouldn't want your fingers get caught here's the other teeth so it feeds it picks it up brings it all in here and feeds it in through here you know and uh, thrashes it out so I'm just cleaning it out a little bit getting rid of all this all this stuff was stuck in there the teeth and the gears and it grabs the rice these are guide guide rods right here. We'll be doing this field here. And our fields, for some reason, have lots of weeds in them. Because the farmers come out here and pick out the weeds. But it doesn't matter. They have to sell their rice. We process our rice, so if we have weeds, it doesn't matter so much. cool things about Japan is uh, JA Japan Agriculture sends out mechanics so here he is checking out the issue Huh? Uh, so he basically wants it tuned up. <laughs> so he's cleaning it up. So it's 6 o'clock on a Saturday, and I'm headed home. Um, yeah, my damn boots leak. <laughs> sucks. And the thing is, is that the boots, my boots leak from the heel. I wore the heel down, and in doing so, created a, a way into the boot, which is just a defect. I should send the boot back. Um, dropped off a bunch of rice. Um, pretty straightforward stuff. There was some challenges. I had, you know, I luckily looked up. I should have filmed it. And I had power lines above me and I was about to lift up. So always, got to always check above you. And uh, now I'm headed home. Spend time with the kids. You know, one of the most beautiful things in Japan is this time of year and the sunsets. And you can get the, understand the name, the land of the of the rising sun uh, that would be from China where the look towards the rising sun would be but really in Japan it's the land of the setting sun and there's a beautiful sunset right there the oceans over there the rivers below me and I'm here at the house changing the world how do you change the world and make it a better place when you are you know a slave to your job and most people are. They work 40, 50, 60 hours a week and to make a few people rich and are basically too exhausted 
to do anything else. I am, for example, I'm here learning uh, farming. And it's Sunday morning, and I get a call, my wife get a call, where are you? You're supposed to be at work this morning. I thought Sundays was my day off. There is no day off when it comes down to harvesting the rice. You have a good day, because tomorrow may be rainy. And it means not spending a Sunday with the boys. It means going to work. And this is common with lots of things out there. Whether you work for Walmart, whether you work as a plumber or as an electrician or as a construction worker, you got these houses to be built, you have a timeline to get it done, and ultimately, where is your time to help make the world a better place? And why is it this way? Is this normal? Well, it is a systemic, or I should say endemic problem facing our planet. It's an endemic problem. And that endemic problem is built on a system that we call capitalism um, that ultimately is designed, in essence, to take advantage of, of scarcity um, that drives um, profit margins and everything else. And scarcity is our resources. We only have so many resources. So we're, we're constantly trying to use these resources, develop them for market in order to sell it, make money, and so on and so on and so on. That's, that's our cycle. And capitalism is built on something called um, compounded annual growth rate. Like, oh, we you know, the first time we've, we even had a 3% uh, GDP growth domestic product, 3%. That's compounded. That's 3%, 3%, 3%, 3%. That's unsustainable. The idea that our planet can sustain an ongoing 3% growth or 4% or 5% or whatever is insane. And people don't get that, right? You can't have infinite growth on a finite resource planet. And we have a whole system of work built on this, you know, um, infinite growth, and whether it's harvesting rice or, or working at Walmart or being a plumber. There's only so many houses this planet can, can sustain. There's only so much rice that you can plant and reap. And there's only so many hours in a day for us to work and in order for us to change this system in order for us to bring about something new we have to usher in a new kind of you know planet one that isn't built on this idea of capitalism on this idea of infinite growth on a finite resource planet one instead that is built on the idea of, of benefit compounded annual benefit rate what is the benefit that my work is providing the planet. What is the benefit? And are we being rewarded for doing this benefit? It's a simple, slight change in having benefit drive our economy, not growth. Growth is unsustainable. Benefit, however, is sustainable. And, you know, that's ultimately what we need to be thinking about. And when we do that, all of a sudden maybe we'll free up folks because if we had a system where by me working the rice farm, somehow the, um, you know, I got paid for the benefit that I'm providing the planet and I was, it, it also empowered others to also um, work in the same line of work, right? Maybe we can make our planet a better place. I don't know. It's crazy talk, I guess. Something you won't see in America is actually people, farmers, sweeping the, the road. So we just did these tambos in my 
teachers like us sweep the road right here.